obviously Mm -hmm. we've been DJing for a long time and Mm -hmm. um, we've probably had some, (laughs) some serious trials and (laughs) tribulations as a DJ coming up. And uh, we probably even um, threw our, you know, hat in the, um, well, not our hat in the pot, but we probably gave it a try at maybe even doing some of our own parties Mm -hmm. as in marketing Everything. I think how it happened for me was I started DJing back then. You had crews, you know, so you would have a DJ and rappers, you know. So um, and then, Mm -hmm. you know, opposed to what people are doing now, fighting, (laughs) you know, we used to just battle like in clubs on microphones and turntables. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And that was the whole battle. And um, yeah. And then we started doing our own parties. But, you know, we were popular, so, you know, we were, they would really pack up quickly. Um, mm-hmm. But, again, I had, I was, like, working with four other, M- I was working with four MCs, so it was five of us, five of us promoting an event, you know, at our high schools, whatever, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But once I started DJing on my own and, you know, started doing different sort of genres, then I was, like, thinking that I can promote a party myself. <laughs> <laughs> It is harder than it looks. Dude, it is actually. <laughs> I, I think there is not one DJ that I know mm-hmm. that I've spoken to mm-hmm. that have tried to, well, they've all tried to, you know, say, hey, I'm a rent a spot and I'm going to do yeah. my own party. And it was not successful. It was a complete failure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I remember doing my first party. It was a college party. And I was like, yo, you know, I, I was I was a popular DJ in college, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, okay, if I threw my own party, people would come. Dude, I think um, maybe <laughs> five people came. <laughs> <laughs> and the club owner was like, uh, back then, you either, you either paid the club, you know, or wherever you were doing a party, you paid them to rent out their space. Or mm-hmm. you guaranteed yeah. a certain bar, you know? Yes. So I think I guaranteed a certain, like, bar amount. So um, I didn't hit it. So <laughs> I had to come out of my pocket, dude. <laughs> oh. You know, that was not cool. What about you? Like, <laughs> did you, so have, did you start, like, um, doing your own parties? And, you know, after a while they became successful or you just, you, you did a few they did not do well. <laughs> how how did it so, how did it work for you? Initially, here uh, there's promoters that would book you or you know work with you, and they would get you into the big clubs, and then they'll just give you a percentage right. of the pot. Mm-hmm. But so when I started DJing, I started in high school, and in high school we did the house parties like bat- we call it bashment parties. So it'd be in somebody's basement when their parents weren't home or whatever. And so we get the speakers and we do all that stuff. And those, I did a couple of those and they were okay. Uh, and then I took a break and I came back to DJing and I was like, okay, well, I, I know some people. I'm going to try and do this stuff outside of the promoters, whatever, and try and do my own party. And that filled miserably. I spent thousands on this thing and it was a, a disaster. Oh, you came out uh, your own pocket. Oh yeah, yeah. I I pay for a uh, flyers. I oh, pay right. for a door person. Uh, I had to pay for the the club to rent the club, and then the club had a they had a deposit that you had to put down to cover for the bar mm-hmm. and to pay the people who are there for the night. <laughs> and so, yeah, I didn't I didn't come close to that. I think that the most I had was like twenty people. Wow. And it was, it, was a, it was a miserable experience. What was the now, capacity there, of the club? The capacity. So this is this is my first problem. Okay. I was thinking too big and yeah, I was working with some people that were like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, we could help you fill it, whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, the club was like 500 people Ooh. around that around that range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the thing is, though, if you have a club that holds 100 people and 30 people come out, it looks like a good night still. It looks pretty good, right? Doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It looks like it looks all right. You know, it's mm-hmm. a little sparse in some sections, but you know, people don't notice. They're still gonna vibe and have fun. When you have a place that holds 500 people and 30 people come out, that is a bloodbath. 
That's and I got staff. an email from the the owner of the club. And he's like, "Congratulations, you are the worst promoter I've ever had to use my venue before." You, I and, will never use you again. Yeah, I was like, "Oh my god!" Wow. <laughs> that that hit my soul. So, uh, yeah, that's when I was like, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for the promoting thing. That's like yeah. pro- promoting the people who promote. Like they have a network of women. <laughs> that do the hard live heavy lifting for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of DJs are like, well, I'll just get my friends and they'll tell friends and they'll just turn into a, no, it's not going to turn into a thing. You need select uh, influencers <laughs> to say, Hey, this is what we're doing and mm-hmm. have them spread the word for you. Right. And that turns into the thing. So I've done colossal disasters like that. <laughs> I've done okay stuff where, you know, like, maybe a hundred or so people showed up and, you know, it was okay. But I realized early on that being a promoter is a different world. Totally and different. As a DJ, it never used to be a thing of, well, I have to DJ plus promote my party. It used to be promoters were a thing and then you used to work your way into working with them. And then they would just call you up anytime they needed somebody or somebody canceled like, Hey, can you come do this thing on Tuesday or whatever? And that, right. that used to be the business model. And then slowly but surely, the promoters started getting a little too, there's too much nepotism and too much, <laughs> we're going to only help our friends. Mm-hmm. And so if you weren't part of the clique or you didn't have people part of that circle, yeah, mm-hmm. you were just on the outs and you just had to work a thing yourself. And the other problem too for, for where I lived, they got rid of a good chunk of the clubs and turned them into condos. So there's only a few places <laughs> that you could play and then there's only a few people who can do it. <laughs> so it just, it just turned into this other monster. And that's when I was like, I'll be a mobile DJ. I don't, clubs is not for me. I'm out the club game. And the other thing too is that we had, if you went through the promoter thing, those guys would have a full night of, you know, 2,000 people in the parking lot and inside the club. And they'd be like, yeah, we didn't hit our mark. So uh, we're going to give you like 100 bucks. And then come talk to me in a couple of weeks and we'll see how this thing turns. And we're like, what? <laughs> no. So that was, the, that was the other factor that you had. A lot of people were like, well, if you're not part of my clique, then you don't matter. And I'll just pay you whatever I feel like. Yeah. And so it, it wrecked the city. It, it absolutely wrecked the city. And so a lot of really good DJs quit or they just started doing other stuff. I totally forgot about the, uh, the basement parties. Man, I had some of the the dopest basement parties. I had a DJ friend, oh, yeah. uh, my next door neighbor, we DJ together. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, people used to hire us to DJ, you know, house parties in someone's basement. So we had our Technique 12, uh, 1200s, a Gemini yeah. mixer, uh, vinyl. And we had these like really like 18 inch, um, Mm-hmm. technique speakers. Subs, technique the speakers yeah technique had they made speakers you know so we had the yeah, three-way the speakers the they were like 18 inch speakers yeah so it's yeah, yeah. And like and just the receiver like a, a um a kenwood or something like that right and mm-hmm. we would just rock out and it was just like you know 15 16 year old guys you know just like making 200 yeah, yeah. that was great yeah, yeah. you said because people used to donate and give money to you so you're like oh i could do this like, yeah uh-huh legit like so, this is real <laughs> just like hey you know i mean if we had a problem we would call up our you know our dads like hey you know what mm-hmm. uh this guy isn't giving us our money then they'll come by you know and you take mm-hmm. care of that you know but that's like um you know the other point you made was you know when i did my first party um it was in a it wasn't that big the place could hold about I would say about 300 people, but still five people in a three, <laughs> five it's or 10 not, people in a 300, like, you know, capacity spot. Yeah. It's like totally whack. And then I remember yeah. later on, as I got older, I was watching this documentary about Washington, D.C. socialites, mm-hmm. right? And that yeah. this person in Georgetown, this woman in Georgetown used to, oh, she was like, um, you know, she was just like, um, you know, a, a tastemaker, you know, she would, she would throw all these like events and everything. And one of the things she yeah. said was, she was like, you know, I always throw parties, events in very small venues. Right. She was like, mm-hmm. I mean, if it's like a place that can hold 150 people, 
and I get 50 mm-hmm. people, the place looks great. I get 75 people. It looks awesome, right? Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? Okay, so that's kind of <laughs> cool, you know? And then, um, yeah, that's – so at that point, I was like, okay, so maybe I should look at it from that angle. And then the other thing you said, which, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, it got a little sticky, but uh, <laughs> someone hired you to DJ – and then at the end of the night, they don't pay you, right? Oh, it happens all the time. <laughs> so I remember People... this one promoter, oh, he ahead, didn't pay us, yeah. right? And he mm. didn't pay me. And I was like, he was like, oh, well, uh, we didn't do well at the bar or whatever. And I'm just like, the place is packed, dude. Do you know what's going on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he was, he was, you know, doing his little like flim flam. And I was like, okay, you know, I was like, we didn't have cell phones then. So I was like, um, I, I either called or like, you know, two way page, like some of my friends, I was like, yo man, I'm, I got an issue down here, dude, come on down and whatnot. Right. So, you yeah, know, my yeah. crew came down and we were like, I was like, dude, what do you, I mean, this is like $250. You telling me you can't pay me, you know? And, um, Mm-hmm. You know, once my boys came down, they were like, oh, okay, well, here you go. You know, we're not going to hire you again. It's just like, okay, you know. A lot of promoters mm-hmm. always had these young people. They would say, hey, come DJ for me. And then they would straight stiff them. Like, for for no reason at all. You know, it's just yeah. like, you do this on a weekly <laughs> basis. Can. Yeah. It's just like, so I wasn't tolerating that. I was like, you know, if we got to, you know, I mean, I... Uh, 250 back then that was a lot of money so i was like that was you know, a lot gotta, of money when you're a kid yeah. man it's a we lot gotta of take it to the bridge we gotta take it to the bridge i'm getting my money for real <laughs> yeah yeah but, but then at that the point with... i was uh okay. go ahead oh good 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 i was gonna say but then at that point like that happened to me twice one time i didn't get paid mm. and then after that i said you know what that's never happening to me again if someone wants to hire me they got to pay me up front and so yeah. from that point forward, whenever I did a party or whenever, whenever someone hired me and they wanted, you know, to hire me to DJ, I was like, sure, mm-hmm. but you got to pay me up front. And that's how I operate from this, you know, from that point forward. You want to hire yeah, me, yeah. you got to pay me up front. <laughs> that's the thing, though. I can do doing a promoter job is really hard and it, it yeah. requires a lot of capital. Mm-hmm. And so what really happens is a lot of these guys overextend themselves trying to make this party work and they get boxed in at the corner and the True. end and they can't <laughs> they can't afford to pay everybody. True. So like I once I understood how this thing worked, I had a little bit more respect for them. But like when you're coming in, you're like, what do you mean you don't have any money? Like you, this party's bumping, like there's 200 people in here or whatever. Like it's the, so like that's the thing. People I, I think that for if you're a new DJ and you're trying to get into this thing you need to understand all aspects of the thing from the, the club owner's perspective, the promoter's perspective, from the DJ's perspective, from the bar's perspective. You need to understand all of these things. Because yeah. you can't, if you fill the place up and nobody drinks alcohol, it's still a bad night. It's a bad night. You know, it, it looks amazing. Everybody's dancing. That's still a yeah. bad night. Like you have to, you need to pick people that are going to drink, but not drink too much. Mm-hmm. And they're going to bring bad element with them and that kind of stuff like that. It's a, it's a complicated dance. And I, I think that once you experience a lot of these L's and this kind of stuff, you appreciate what goes into it more. Like I've experienced it from the promoter side, from the DJ side, from the sound technician side, oh, <laughs> but what these guys yes. are doing, <laughs> I've experienced it from that side. And like, so, and, and from the owner side too, as well. Yeah, and and so true. like, I, I have a different interpretation about what I think this, what goes into a good party and you know how hard it is because every each one of these angles is like well this is bs because you're not gonna pay me for this or this is bs because you're not didn't do this whatever <laughs> but there's so many moving parts man. it's such a scam a lot a lot of it is just scammy and just like a little cruddy too mm-hmm. it's just like you got a yeah. young dj coming up he wants to dj and you just want to take advantage of him that's like really scammy that's like really cruddy and i understand yeah. these cats like to like back in the day it was all about paper. You know, you had, um, you know, you, you, you created flyers, you know, you, you put them out, you know, put them on cars yeah. and things like that. Today, it's just an email list, right? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's how it turned into, the email, or the Facebook list. Yeah, you do know, you have no need to, like, be outside. You can promote that mm-hmm. party online, and it could be a complete success, 
right from yeah. your phone, right from your home, right mm-hmm. at your fingertips, and you never have to leave the house. That's pretty cool. Let me ask you this here. Okay, mm-hmm. so we've all had like DJ fails, like DJ failures, like you're DJing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're yeah. at a show, you know, you're DJing a party, and then all of a sudden you had a big fail. Like I remember watching um your boy uh, Steve Aoki or whatever his name is. He stood yeah, on the yeah. table and the table collapsed. While he was this, he was at a festival or something. Oh. He stood on the table, you know, doing his old, you know, all the, all the EDM stuff, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And then he stood <laughs> on the table and it split in half. And he was just like, uh. It's just like, I mean, I never had a failure that bad. But I, no, I've no. had some. What was a sort of like um, a DJ I've, failure I've DJ had a, fail I've for you? bunch of failures <laughs> i had a power power failure ah, where half the half the bo- venue lost power mm. and the half was where the speakers were at <laughs> so the lights are on and everybody's looking at me like yo what you do i'm like i didn't do anything no way but can you can see the lights just like just from the end where the bar was mm. to the other side where i was at the where the dj booth is half of the power is off the power where i am at that was completely off and it was it was a circuit breaker thing or whatever. So I've had a failure like that. I think that the worst failure I've had is um, let me see. I've had an equipment failure where uh, the mixer broke, and <laughs> and so <laughs> it was jammed on one side. Wait a so minute, you, you mean you mean a crossfader jam? <laughs> yeah, the crossfader jam, dude. And it stuck. How does and that happen? It wasn't one of those things where you could just flip it and just turn it off and use the faders to go up and down, or whatever. No, it was stuck. And <laughs> that was a bad night. All right. <laughs> that How was does a very that bad happen? night. How does like the mixer get stuck? <laughs> uh, people, because it was a, it was like a bar and the people who use it, they, uh, it, other people use it. So I guess the, eventually it just snapped or something and it just got jammed in there. And that was the end of that. So that night ended early. There's no way of fixing it because nobody had a backup mix. Oh, wait a minute. You have to shut the party down? Yeah, man. The party was shut down. I mean, wow. I I think think that that's probably the worst that that I've ever taken. What about like DJ performance failures? Like where, you know, the song like scratched, you know, like just slid across like, you know, the vinyl. uh, The worst thing from equipment failure I had was... Uh, I was doing a wedding, and during the bride and groom's first dance, oh. my laptop went kaput in the middle of their song, and uh, I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" You know, you're probably like, um, oh, "You're just you're looking. You're you're never looking up. You're always yeah. looking down when that's a fail. You're like, um, let me oh, see. Um, so like something here. <laughs> so you know, they're like, "All right, bride oh and groom's going to do the first dance." Everybody's like, okay, cool. And what happened? I, I mean, what happened? Circle. So here's what happened. The best man sang the words to the lyrics to the song. Okay. And he sang it in completion. So he knew where the words were or whatever. And he just got in the microphone like, yo, thank God for that dude. That dude's a real MVP. Mm-hmm. So he sang. He came up and sang it. Well, I'm over here like, oh, my God. I'm trying to figure you this thing what? out to get power back to my laptop Reboot. or whatever to get to working again. <laughs> It's yeah, the battery. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it just it went poof out, like off, off, and it took me like five or ten minutes to get it back on again. But wow. fortunately, the bride and groom were like they were real chill, like they were like just ah, whatever, man. This kind of stuff happens. It's a it's an open bar. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It was like it, it was like a bohemian type vibe from the bride. Oh, that's like, she's cool. just super mm-hmm. chill, and she was like, she just came over and she put her hand on my shoulder. She's like, you know what? These things are. You know, I'm glad you're here and you're you're doing the best you can. And this is it's things you're happen. Sweating like it's anything, a, huh? Oh my god! Not I was like, like oh, all wet under the armpits and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so basically, I, I finally got it open, and I listen. I I think I did my best DJ set ever. You were like, that. listen, no, you don't have like, to pay me for the rest this. of the night. I'm gonna rock this out. <laughs> I'm gonna burn this place down. There's no tinders left, like nothing. Wow. So yeah, that, that was the worst. 
I think equipment failure that I've ever had as far as gear with the laptop. Wow. That's the word. And that's why if anybody's watched my channel for a long time, I am adamant about having options and a way to fix things or at least yeah. a backup of stuff. Mm -hmm. Backup mixer. I, I travel a backup controller in my car. I have I have like the like for weddings, I have the songs on my phone. If I could just plug my phone into Spotify or something. Like I have that kind of stuff just because once you go through something like never that, mm -hmm. it's just like a oh never again, ever, ever, ever again. So that that's that's probably the worst, that's the worst hardware failure I've ever had. What about you? Oh, dude, listen, I've blown out systems before, you know, just completely <laughs> blew them out. Like, I mean, I was like, you know, kicking a base all the way up, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, just like hitting it, you know, definitely when I was playing like a lot of like house music, you know, it just had to be hard, you know, and yeah, we would yeah. just, uh, we would, we would blow out amplifiers, we uh, would blow out uh, speakers, and then, you know, with all of those things back in the day, Mm -hmm. They all have fuses. So you needed like a replacement fuse, right? And that wasn't something yeah. you just had laying around, right? So you mm -hmm. would just blow a whole system out. Um, <laughs> I mean, was, was this the like, clubs or your own thing? Uh, both, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. Like, I mean, I'll be, I as a club owner, I'd be heated right now. <laughs> listen, I remember I was in a club and we were, um, you know, I had a, I had a crowd, you know, it wasn't me, but someone hired me Yeah, yeah. and you know, they were like, you know, I want to hire you. And I was like, I mean, I play really hard, deep, you know, I, I play hard, mm -hmm. deep music, you know, deep house music. And they were like, that's okay. I was like, I don't, you know, I'm just letting you know, I mean, you know what I play, you know? He's mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got a vibe. I got a crowd who wants to hear that. So he hired me and it was a crowd, dude. They came in like tank tops and like shorts and like sneakers <laughs> and they came to like sweat all night long. Oh, and I wow, was like, okay. I was like, oh, dude, this is a, this is a, like this, this crowd wants to rock out. So I was like, mm -hmm. so I have vinyl too, you know? So I was like, oh my goodness. I, I was, um, I started DJing and the crowd got into it. And it was yeah. a, I had the last um, set too. So I think my set was from like um, 1 a.m. to like 4 p.m. or 2 a.m. to like, I'm sorry, it was 1 a.m. to like 4 a.m. or 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. One of those, I okay. can't remember. But oh, it was like a rave, rave. Oh, dude, it was like, um, you know, we call them underground parties, but a rave, yeah, you know, but um, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, man, I was like, and so after about three hours, I was like, just, I was in a zone, dude. I'm telling you, <laughs> I was zoned out. And uh, next thing you know, yeah. I cranked up the bass and I was just like, you know, just playing with everything. And then that you can just hear it like on old system, like old systems like that. You would always hear like a, you would hear oh. that, right? You know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. like, that's the fuse going out and also opposed mm -hmm. to the speakers or the just the pop yeah yeah you know just like it would just fuse out you know i've also like um i was at a party where this uh we would it was i was DJ, djing with a bunch of other people and we set a mm -hmm. speaker on fire <laughs> what? what are you Dude, doing over there man <laughs> we were like we cranked that bass up man i'm telling you because like <laughs> You know, in, in New Jersey, you know, you would uh mm. in New York you would also you would always crank your mids down, right? Yeah. So yeah. to play like really dope house music or, you know, deep house music, your mids, you would you would always run your mids sort of midpoint or slightly lower mm. than midpoint. And then it was all about your highs and your bass. Yeah, yeah. And Man, we killed it, and like, yeah, this speaker caught on fire, dude. It was just a smoke. It was smoke coming out. The next thing you know, it caught on fire, dude. It was just like, wow. So, um, but in oh, terms God. of um, performance failures, I've had like uh, records just like skip, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, I had that, and I was like, oh, and then I had a record like um, I had was DJing so much that I forgot mm. to clean my needles and then I put a record on and started playing. Then all of a sudden it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, yeah. live. And I was like, Oh my goodness, this is not good. You know? Oh, and then man. you also had those failures where someone would hire you to DJ mm. and, um, you know, you would come and bring out your system and, 
the acoustics in a place just really suck. Like when I DJ uh, in places where the acoustics suck, I'm like totally thrown off. I'm at a, I'm unbalanced at that point, you know? So I really don't know yeah. what to do. So I'm just really DJing just to get through the night at that point. The acoustics in this one place, yeah. it was a huge museum. I think it was the Carnegie Mellon uh, library, which is a museum now mm -hmm. in DC. And, yeah. um, it was like 80 foot ceilings, dude. <laughs> I was like, the sound did not go straight forward. It went up and it never came yeah, down. And I was just walls like, and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I hated doing college or not college, uh, high school parties in the, yeah. in the gym. Yeah. The, the proms or whatever. I hated DJing them because that's the, you get that bouncing stuff yeah. and you can't, you can, you can only DJ with both your headphones on. Cause I DJ like this. Yeah. And no. <laughs> I can't yeah. do that. You no, can't you, listen you, outside. You no, need the you headphones need, on. Yeah. yeah, you need the headphones on. You know how we used to do, how we used to beat that when we DJed in like, um, you know, in gyms or things of that nature. We used to just bring like 20, 30 sets of speakers. So you'd have like, you know, like a hundred speakers, you know, yeah, just like, so you know, 50 on one side, 50 on the other. And then the DJ in the middle. And it was just mm -hmm. so much sound. And then the other thing we did was, we would um, we would buy three way speakers or two way speakers and cut them right, mm -hmm. and then separate the mids and then also the 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 bass cab right. So then yeah. we would like you know then just enclose it with some more wood, and so we would have like you know maybe thirty like eighteen inch subs just by themselves. But we didn't even know they were subs. You know, we were just like, okay, these are our eighteen inch woofers. And then we had some horns. <laughs> yeah. And then we had some like tweets, you know, some Twitters, uh, some tweeters, you know. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and then we would set them up like that. So we had each of those running on their own amplification. Mm -hmm. And so and then we would have like fifty or sixty speakers, dude. And that's how we used to defeat sort of those acoustics and um and gems and things of that Brutal. nature you know it's like the i remember i went to um i went to a party and i want to say it was in south bronx way back in the day and it was okay. like um you know the jamaicans had set up in like um like bronx actually it was um bronx river the jamaicans had mm. set up in this park dude <laughs> yo I'm a DJ and I'm, I'm into equipment and everything. So me and my boys, we go over to Bronx river and the D uh, the Jamaican set up in this park, man, they had like, they, they took like these home speakers, like 18 inch, you know, three way home cabinets, uh, you know, Kenwood mm -hmm. and pioneer and uh, JBL and all these other things and sort of Jer uh, Jerry rigged them. And they had like a hundred of these speakers. It's and they would just it's all bass. It's all about bass. And I was like, when I saw that, I was like, I went back home. I was like, I'm doing something wrong because these guys <laughs> brought out home speakers. Yeah. And was yeah, killing yeah, yeah. it, playing like that hardcore, you know, like Jamaican, like the root stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you know, because the 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 faster sort of stuff wasn't really rocking, but you know, it was just like Man, they rocked it out, man. I was like, man, you can hear that. We came off the subway and we uh, heard that sound system, dude. That, and we were still four, kick, yeah, four, four, four blocks chest, away. Man. Yeah, those oh my goodness. No joke. They kick yeah. you in your chest. You better be ready. That and it's was a, a serious That's system. one of the reasons why I don't like going to those parties because you're going to be deaf. One side yeah. of your ear is going to be deaf no matter what. So I, I would just... Girls want to dance by the speakers. I'm like, nah, we're going over here, <laughs> like yeah. way away from the music. We're gonna dance over there because I like my hearing, man. I just can't do it. Just be sitting. These guys just sit next to the speakers, and it's like no big deal. I got. I I would imagine that after 15 years of that, those guys are all deaf now. They have to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the type of person when I go to parties and if it's like some real serious, like if it's like an mm -hmm. underground house, um, house party, I like to be near the speakers, you know, myself because I mean, yeah. yeah. Do you, I, do I you mean, have earplugs? Do you carry No, them? dude. I like to, I like to feel that bass oh. in my chest. I like to hear those highs in my ears. I know I probably, you know, shouldn't do that, but I also, um, yeah, you yeah. know, go see um I'll, I'll see my ear doctor every si like lately <laughs> i guess over the last um probably the last 10 or 12 years 
I would go see my ear doctor like every six months just to like get my ears clean, my you know, just to clean that wax out. A DJ, a producer told me that before. DJ producer, he was like, mm-hmm. and I, I think I said, well, you know, if you have to tell, if you have to give some advice, like um, some very simple advice, what would it be? And he was like, go see your ear doctor like once a year, every, twice a year, get your ears clean. And I was like, really? He was like, yes. yes. And I was it like, is wow. Because nice, you can do your home remedies and stuff like that, but mm. actually getting your ears clean yeah. is nice. It's like you got you put glasses on for the first time. Like, Dude, like oh, listen. this is what this sounds like. Listen, man, I remember the first time that happened, and I came back to this. Well, no, it happened. I went to an ear doctor. I was like, yeah, just clean my ears and um, mm. you know, check them and then clean them. And then I went outside, and I was like, wow. And then I came back in the studio yeah. And I was like, "Holy crap!" I yeah, was hearing, everything feels different. I, I was hearing frequencies I haven't even like, you know, I, they they were all muffled in, you know, just like all packed in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's mm-hmm. true, it's true. I don't know how we got in the ear thing, but <laughs> it's true. But dude, I so, mean, <clears throat> yeah. so let me ask you this: What's up? What are what are your DJ wins? Like, what have you saved, and what are your like things that you've done, you're like, okay, yeah, I did that. Like, what is a successful party for you as a DJ? Um, we did a 24 hour party. Um, and it oh, was wow. just me and this other DJ. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he was uh, a DJ from another college too. It was a, it was a college party and it was um, spring break and mm-hmm. um, it was down in Richmond and uh virginia and um we were like yo we're gonna do a 24-hour party and we dj'd for 24 hours and um that's crazy and it was like okay so we did this party we set up and here's the thing right you we thought that the system would break down you can't just have a system on like that for 24 hours, you know? Yeah, it's not We good. were still using amplifiers, and these were like passive speakers. They were not powered mm-hmm. speakers, you know? Um, yeah. And, and then, you know, but before that even happened, we did, um, me and my boy, we DJed 24 hours on, a, on our radio show. So we did a 24-hour radio show. It was spring break as well. And everyone oh, was wilding out, man. <laughs> yeah, everyone was gone. So all everyone who did shows, yeah. they were gone. They went home. So we were like, hey, you know what? We can let us do a 24 hour set. You know, and we did a 24 mm-hmm. hour set, man. And we were up. We were just like playing. It was like, you know, after a while, you know, I, I think it took about five or six hours for us to really start getting into it. I think I brought like maybe six or seven crates of records. He brought another six or seven crates of records and we mm-hmm. were just like playing them. And we were playing, we were playing tracks and B sides of tracks that we had never played before. Mm-hmm. Man. And we just, we took this whole, the journey was ridiculous. People were calling in like this. Listen, I am like feeling this <laughs> and I all yeah. I know is after both those events, man, I think I slept for like twenty four hours too. So Oh um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty serious. The the other thing is I played at um some uh, really big clubs um mm-hmm. in, in like uh different parts of uh the country, New York, Chicago, those were pretty cool. And I wasn't a yeah, promoter. Yeah. Someone said, Hey, you know, do would you like you to show play up. out here? Yes, the you best, know, would you like to show up, you know. So I was like, "Oh, really? You're gonna pay me?" I was like, "Okay, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna need a hotel room too," you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So those were pretty cool events. I did a a party in um, I want to say it was, um, San Francisco or L.A. Okay, and it was at this art gallery, and. It was an art gallery by day. And then at night, they would roll these bars out. These bars had wheels. And, you know, they would Mm. open up these sort of cabinets. And these cabinets had speakers in them. And um, what was the um, name? It was like, I want to say Leviticus, but that's a club in New York. But it was like Levitars or something like that gallery. And um, Mm. I was like, um, someone, a friend of a friend hired me because the DJ they hired didn't show up and he was like, you know, I'm gonna bring my man out here. So I went out and, um, it was pretty dope, man. It was just like the coolest party. That was the first time it was in San Francisco. That was the first time I actually, 
uh, did a party in San Francisco, and I was like, oh, they like dance music out here too. So that was pretty cool. What about you? What was your biggest DJ success story? Uh, I, I have two things that I, I look fondly on. Everything else is like, you know, good to decent. Mm-hmm. There's two things that I, I, I love. There, I did this thing for Microsoft had a developers conference mm-hmm. up here a couple years ago. Right. And, you know, they're just throwing money around. So oh they, they booked this boat to do a, a thing on, but the boat wasn't leaving the dock. So <laughs> it was just there. Right. They set up these couches. They made like this, this like a lounge type thing. Mm-hmm. And so people were coming back and forth from developers conference. And this thing lasted, it was pretty much all day. But I DJed for six hours straight, no breaks, without playing any songs twice. And they're like, go do whatever you want. You know, it's, it's a younger crowd, so just have fun. So Vinyl was, or digital? Playing, digital. So okay. it was uh, underground hip hop, hip hop R and B, soul, dance music, everything. I was just going straight without any duplicates. I was like, I'm not gonna play a song twice. Yeah. And so people were like, they're trying to give me drinks from the bar. People were giving me food, and I was like, I can't leave the DJ booth, so I'm just gonna go <laughs> straight because like somebody was streaming it. They're like they had like those 360 cameras. They're watching around. They were following me around, and so that was kind of cool. My my other thing that I did that I I still look fondly on was and this is vinyl. Uh, I did this Carabana party at the Four Seasons, and it it was uh, with DJX. Shout out to DJX up here for Canadian people. They know who he is. Uh, we did he did one room, and we uh, my friends and I we did another room. And it was, it was an amazing party. It's like at least a couple thousand people in there. It was it was insane. That's one of the best parties I've ever done in my life. And yeah, I got, I got out of character. I was on top of the speakers on a microphone, just screaming the lyrics to the songs. <laughs> and then I got down and DJed, and like this was, it was wild. This was, it was a fun party. I wish because it was back with vinyl, so like I wish people had cell phones and stuff like that. So. I could kind of look back on some of the stuff. I have people that were there and they're like, dude, what got into you? <laughs> Cause like normally I'm just chill and I'll just play music and I don't really talk that much on the microphone unless I have to, but I don't know, the crowd, the energy was so hyped that yeah, it just, just went off, man. So those, those are my two favorite uh, DJ stories that I have. What I'm about done. your biggest paycheck as a DJ? What was your biggest paycheck as a DJ? Ooh. I did okay, so I did something for this insurance company. I used to do their their events all the time, and they they booked me to do an uh, award ceremony for it. And so, <laughs> yeah, so everybody's in bow ties and stuff like that, and I'm sitting there playing Beanie Man and Vibes Cartel and just ratchet reggae <laughs> and uh, and hip hop and stuff like that. But yeah, this, this is a cool experience. That, I think that was that was probably my biggest check, and yeah, <laughs> it's a war ceremony. Everybody's got you know you got to play the music when people walk on stage, yeah, and and do all this other stuff and then rock a party. You know, yeah, yeah. I think that was probably the the best paycheck I got from. And the award goes to Smiling Schmershowitz, you know. Yeah, and they just like to play them off. It's kind of cool I, though. Like, <laughs> I would get, um, I would do so as a DJ, not as mm. someone hiring me to do AV, but as a DJ. Um, I think, um, when I, um, so, well, when I used to DJ in, um, L, on the West Coast, I used to get like, uh, nice little paychecks, but you know, the travel mm. and everything else ate into that, you know, hotel and all that other stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. just here in D.C., you know, just doing some A.V., I've gotten like, uh, you know, five, six thousand dollars for doing something. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe the again, once I figured out the cheat code and I think I had already <laughs> figured out the cheat code, I was like, OK, you know, my subcontract is going to come in. I'm going to pay them a thousand dollars to set everything up. I'm going to pay someone yeah, else, yeah. you know, maybe five hundred dollars to run itinerary for me. I may even bring in a DJ, pay him three, four hundred dollars just to play a little mm-hmm. background music. So I'm walking out the door with like four thousand dollars and did not lift a finger. <laughs> yeah, so that's big. pretty cool too, you know. So um but again, you know, that's you know, that's from years of DJing, 
years mm-hmm. of experience again understanding the connections and the networking yes. and stuff yeah right you know and you're just like okay you know these corporations i think for me corporate gigs are you know you can make a really good living off of corporate gigs consistent consistent <laughs> yeah because yeah you know the um the really big sort of corporations they're always going to have like Christmas parties and also just like mm-hmm. quarterly parties and, you know, retreats and things of that nature. So you're always going to, you know, if you have like um, eight to 10 corporations on speed dial, <laughs> you're going to make money, yeah. you know, you're going to be okay. Um, and, oh, yeah. and then like, you know, the, the other smaller parties, like your little residencies you have at lounges and things mm-hmm. of that nature. That's pretty cool. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm like ultra selective, you know, I don't like just, mm. it has to be right. Someone <clears throat> may call me up. Hey, you know, I want you to DJ yada, yada, yada. I ask questions, yeah. you know, I see what's going on. You know, it doesn't matter if the money's right. I mean, for me, it's just like, um, you know, how is, is this gig going to create any stress? Right. Because, yeah, I don't DJ to, you know, and, and deal with stress like that. It's just like, that's not my thing. DJing is fun. You know, I don't want to like deal with stress while I'm DJing. So, you mm-hmm. know, you can get a really good idea of like, you know, who you're dealing with, the client, you know, and if they just seem annoying up front and just like, you know, a nuisance up front, you're just like, uh, oh, you know what? No, I don't think I'm interested in this gig. <laughs> yeah. Like you, people, cause the thing though, it sounds like humble bragging, but once you get to a certain level, and you, at least have experienced DJing and clubs and parties and stuff like that, taking every gig that somebody throws at you is not an option. Yeah. I just, I, it's not worth your headache, your stress, yeah. or you bringing equipment and stuff like that. Like a lot of times, it's just not worth it. No. And when you, when you're at home, you're like, I can't wait to DJ. If only someone would book me. You're like, Yeah, I'll do it. Like sometimes you should say no because these guys are like they're clowns or they're gonna they're gonna stiff you. Or, you know, it's just in a bad part of town. Like, there's a lot of stuff you got to think you got to consider before you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I do that with weddings. I don't, uh, when I talk to the person, it's my, it's an interview for them to interview me, but I'm also <laughs> interviewing them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'm man, like, come Yo, on. if you're going to be a bridezilla, no thanks. I'm not, I'm not going to waste my time on that. No. I don't care how much money you're paying. If it's going to be a hassle, like, I, I ask probing questions about, you know, what, what type of people are going to be there. And, you know, like I, I get, I ask questions about the bride just to kind of feel her out and, like, and see like how many eyes does, like, does, she, does she have an eye right here? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like just like, I, I, I got to vibe you out to see like what, what right. kind of energy you have. Cause I've, I've done some bridezilla weddings and I'm just like, why did I the do this? I would rather shoot myself in the face than do this party right now. It's pretty and, stressful, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's an energy that like they make you miserable. They 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 subtract years off of your life, and you know it's a lot of stuff that you gotta uh, you gotta put into account. I know mm-hmm. people are like, I, if only I could just do a party right now, this would be awesome. I'm like, be careful what you wish for. There's a lot of really shady people that are gonna make you do a party for free. Yeah, or or it's just like how miserable they are subtracts how much money they're giving to you. Like, it's just not worth it. And I, um, I, I've done enough of those. That I just don't care. <laughs> now that, you know, we're talking, I actually have a really bad DJ failure. It wasn't like, it wasn't technical. It wasn't, you know, had nothing mm-hmm. to do with equipment. I did a new year's Eve party. A friend of mine who I thought was a friend, he, you know, he would run, you know, different restaurants and he wanted me to do, his New yeah. Year's Eve party. And I was like, his name is Carlos. And I was like, yo, you know, I'm deep house. Right. And you know, he was like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. I want that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. So I get Everybody there and he's that. like, okay, I want you to play reggaeton all night long. And I'm like, Dude, what? <laughs> he gave me the CDs. He was like, I just want you to play all these songs. Once you okay. finish, go back to the front all through the night. And I was like, really? Okay. And, and so, you know, reggae tone, you know, because I'm not, that's not my flavor, you know, just listening to that for four hours, three hours, mm-hmm. man, I had a yeah. headache. Right. And, um, <laughs> and so yeah. after, you know, I did it just because, you know, that's just the type of person I am. But after mm-hmm. the party, I like, you know, we met up and I hemmed him up. Right. You know, <laughs> and mm-hmm. I was like, um, 
yo, it's, you know, I was like so pissed off, man. You know, I was, I had a headache. Like I said, I was just so pissed <laughs> off and, you know, everyone left. And so we would chill and he, you know, brought over mm-hmm. some drinks and I hemmed him up and I was like, dude, I mean, that's like really screwed up, man. You know, I was like, I could have easily played, you know, something else, yeah. but you know, it was like, he had like all of his, you know, sort of uh, Latin people there. Uh, he had, he, one of his friends who's a promoter decided that they were going to turn this like, you know, um, this restaurant, which was a pretty diverse restaurant into like a predominantly Latin, you know, New Year's Eve party. And that's why he wanted to play reggaeton. Oh, okay. Right? I was like, oh, I just wow, need dude. you to press play. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it was just CDs. And I was just like, and you know, here's my thing, right? Mm. I'm like, dude, if you told me that up front, I still would have taken a gig. But I would have had my mm-hmm. boy DJ. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. wouldn't even be at the spot, <laughs> you know? That's why I think that with new DJs in particular, when you first get your first gig, you need to ask questions. Don't be yeah. like, yes, okay, great. I'll show yeah. up. At... No, mm-hmm. no, you need to ask questions. What's required of you? What are they expecting? What the audience is going to be like? Mm-hmm. With the age group of the audience? Right. What do they like previous events? You you have to ask all the questions of the world. You need intel. You can't just be like, oh, I'll just show up. I'm a DJ. Like, no, man, you need to know because everything's different. A lot of people like like how you're saying, like, I just I just play deep house. Like, OK, that's it. That's it. People take that and like, yeah, yeah, but you're a DJ. So you should be able to play country yeah. music, too. Like, no. Hell no. <laughs> you will not but that's, see that's me how. No. Yeah. But that that's how a lot of people, especially corporations, when you when you do corporate gigs, that's how they hear it in their head mm-hmm. of, yeah, yeah, I, I probably play Deep House. Like, okay, cool, cool. But you can play blurred lines, right? Like like just <laughs> in the, the back of version. their head. The, <laughs> there's yeah. a country version, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but in the back of their head, there's like, but you're a DJ. You should be able right. to play anything. I don't understand what the difference is. And I tell people all the time. If you've never done weddings before, mm-hmm. you need to experience it first before you try and get paid from it because it's yeah. a different beast. Totally Doing a different. wedding is not like a club. At a club, everybody expects the same experience. If they, they're like, oh, this is hip-hop night, they're like, okay, I expect hip-hop here. And if somebody wants to hear a house, that's their fault. Yeah. When you do a wedding and somebody wants to hear a house, and you don't have house, that's your fault. And they're going to treat it as such. So, like, I think that you definitely need to experience the process and understand that you're more of a jukebox at a wedding than you are a DJ. <laughs> you like, know. you got to look at it that way, especially for the bride and groom. Like, they're like, oh, no, I'm a, I'm a DJ, and I, I do a lot of scratching. Yeah. I do like, no, 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 the bride doesn't right. care. <laughs> what she wants to hear is what she's asking for. And so you should have known that before I you got started. I want blurred lines eight times in an hour. Exactly. Like you need to know what you're dealing with before you take the gig and before you get started. That's why like any wedding I do, I ask a ton of questions and I make sure I'm on top of everything. So I have a no playlist surprises specifically, get there. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what kind of music do you want to play? What age group? Like what genre? How long do you want to play this genre? Do people that are coming, do they like this genre? Or is this in your head? Because I've had a wedding where the bride was like, I like to play, like, I like this stuff. And she goes, my friends like my music too. And out of the back of my head, I was like, "Mm, I don't know about that. (laughs) Everyone's got different heads. Like, a lot of your friends could be like, well, I just like you. So I'll play along with I like your music too. But I don't really (laughs) like your music. So I was like, so I looked yeah. over to the the groom and I was like, so what kind of music do your friends like? And it's completely <laughs> opposite of what her, what she was saying. So I was like, oh boy, here we go. So I talked to the maid of honor. So the, you gotta, this is things like you gotta deal with that. I talked to the maid of honor mm-hmm. and I was like, well, what, what kind of music do you think the people are coming? What do they want to hear? And I talked to the mother and I was like, what does she want to hear? So like, I got a, a vibe. So I tried to cater to the bride initially and then when the thing was going south i was like hey <laughs> you know like <laughs> i'm playing your list here you want like, me to take over or you want here me to you go this? like you holding up the piece of paper and whatnot like i'm like this yeah <laughs> like this I'm is it i have this. it on like, my phone i got the check marks here i did this i did this in the order you said you want me to take over you want me to look, keep going 
And that's when you like you you make it clear of like, yo, I'm following what you wanted. Mm-hmm. What do you want me to do now? Yeah. And I give them ample opportunity to be like, she's like, ah, okay, you know, you could try some of this stuff. Like, okay, cool. And then like, I bring the party back, but like yeah. I make it you gotta if you don't have this organized in advance, you're never gonna know what to do. Cause I wouldn't know what kind of music to flip over to to fix it. <laughs> or, you know, who right. to cater to and who to ignore. Like, it's you're like, not going to know these things unless you ask these questions. Like, you like, got to ask questions, man. Okay, time to play the heavy metal. Like, no, no heavy metal at all. <laughs> you know, that, that is, is insane. Acid, man. That, that is, is like, acid. yeah, it's just like, listen, um, like I said, you know, it's just like, again, um, you can hire me. Mm-hmm. I may even take the gig, but I may not DJ there as well. I mean, I have DJs on deck, you know, just like, okay, I don't want to do that party. It's really good money. They came to yeah, me. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can, you know, I, I can I can DJ here and um, I can provide music and also mm. provide the type of music, you know. I'll call up my boy like, hey, you know what? They want top 40. Just give it to them top 40. Um, mm. And, you know, we'll have a sound system there for, <laughs> for you, you know. Um, hey, so yeah. this is like what the mobile DJ companies do. And I do it just on an L, just using like a <laughs> subcontractor. It's just like, no, I'm That's not. Exactly like, what they do. Yeah, you know, it's just like, okay, you know, we got three sets of DJ equipment. Okay, Bobby, Mm. you're going over here, so bring the truck over. I'm like, no, that's ridiculous, man. You know, (laughs) the wedding stuff, that's a very intricate business. A lot of people don't understand how intricate DJ, uh, wedding DJs are, you know. You go in, you meet the people, you go to the venue, you walk around the venue, you know. Mm -hmm. You go through the itinerary, the whole steps, you know, the bride yeah, and yeah. groom are coming out. You know, the the bride is being, uh, you know, the first dance with the bride and the mother or whatever. You know, it's just yeah, like yeah, you got the all playlist. Of that stuff. Right. You know, you also have to know, like, um, uh, one of the things, like I said, I don't do weddings anymore. I've done f- a mm-hmm. few weddings. But the last wedding I did, I was like, I'm never doing a wedding again. <laughs> but the thing I used yeah. to always look for is, is this an open bar wedding? Because if it's mm-hmm. an open bar wedding. That matters and you know, too. At some point, people are gonna want to party, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that matters like, a lot, right? So, um, I, I think that's, um, but yeah, listen, man, I give mad mm-hmm. props to like wedding DJs because that is a, you know, it's a very intricate sort of like space of DJing to be in that a lot of yeah. people don't understand. You know, there you are some like super duper wedding DJs. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I think that. If you want to be a wedding DJ, you need to practice speaking on the microphone yeah. or just hire somebody to do the microphone stuff for you because yeah. that matters a lot. Mm-hmm. You cannot go through that and not talk once. It's if not going to work. If you can't put like sentences together. <laughs> yeah, you got to be clear and concise. Right. <laughs> if you're giving directions for who's going to take home the vase <laughs> on the table, you need to be clear and concise. Imagine like so you everyone know, understands you're you. up there like you can't even speak English well. You know, you're like broken English. Oh, yeah. and you have to yeah, be able yeah. to speak clearly and make sure that, you know, you're not on the microphone mumbling. <laughs> right? Yeah. See, like, or like I, that can be crazy. I do weddings for different cultures and that's another challenge too because – Sometimes people can't speak the ink, the English or the language. Mm. They can't speak it well, or they kind of understand you, but not really. So you got to point to things. Like it's, it's a whole other thing of you got to deal with a level of patience. Uh, but yeah, it, it's I I like some of this stuff because the challenge. Because I find doing just basic DJing is boring sometimes. Yeah, I know people are like. Oh, you can't say that like but sometimes <laughs> like, it's yes, boring to me <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're just gonna play okay i'm gonna play these top 40 songs in this order and you know yeah, the night's see, over it gets boring sometimes that that's where you know that's that's why that's the other thing you know you had like uh mm. so like you, you have like a um a wedding dj crate right you know yeah that these are songs that people are going to want to hear at all yes. weddings, you know, I remember when the um, mm-hmm. the uh, electric slide was out. Remember that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had you guys to play that. Keep it shuffle now. <laughs> you, you, you had to play that on at every wedding, mm-hmm. at every corporate party. Yeah, 
you just have to play it. And it was just like, then it was yeah. always that old person who was trying to do the electric slide, but they were like, you know, putting a bit more yeah, hips into it. it. You know, right. Just <laughs> like, now she's now shaking it, that booty. <laughs> yeah. Now it's the, the cha-cha slide or the Cupid shuffle or the, some of this other stuff. You know. What's the other thing? There's another shuffle song. I can't remember what it's called. There's it's so many to like play, dance yeah. songs. It's not... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, follow orders. Like, I hate those right. songs so much. But like, like if I was to play them, no. that's, uh, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Let me go get something from the bar. Like <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, come on, dude. That's the autopilot. Like a lot of DJs use that as a, a get out of trouble card. Mm. Like that a party's going south and you don't know what to do in these different age groups. Cupid Shuffle or whatever. <laughs> or the electric slide. Yeah, yeah. They're like, all you right, know? I'm going to re- recalibrate and try and figure this thing out. Right. You know, for DJs, especially for people that you don't know, like if you do corporate stuff, it's the same people over and over for every party. So they know you and yeah. you know them and you kind of right. know what to do. Uh, but like if you're doing an event for like a wedding for people that you don't know, <laughs> you need those get out of jail card songs. No. That I'll save you, save your bacon and kind of recalibrate because <laughs> you have to understand what you're dealing with. Like I've done parties where uh, their people are culturally, they like, like, like sea shanty songs, like the old songs where, you know, they, they do a song, like they get together, like, now here's the tale of whatever, like they got kind of stuff. Oh, it's hard man. to explain. But if you've never seen it before, it's not going to make sense oh to you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, like, uh, well, uh, what's the group? Like, it's a group called Big, I think, Big Little C or something like that. And it's one of those songs where everybody gets together and sings a song and they dance together. Like, it's, it's a weird vibe. But, like, that's a get-out-of-jail song, mm. depending on the, the type of people you're around. <laughs> but you need to know these things exist. Right. <laughs> so if you're getting, you're, you're having some trouble trying to figure out how to play or whatever, you need to know that. Like, oh, I can throw this song here. Oh, okay. Well, I need to play uh, Cha Cha Slide here, or I need to play YMCA here, or I need to play like. Oh my goodness, it, not YMCA for real. Forget yeah, you got to figure these things out. Like it used to be like Gangnam Style or whatever. Like there's yeah. these things when you play corporate or even weddings. There's these things that you have to pull all your pride aside, and you're like, okay, well, <laughs> I know I'm a DJ. And I, I can scratch and do doubles, but I'm no. all right, everybody. I'm gonna do this for you guys. Like you, you, <laughs> the uh, Macarena, like you gotta. There's things that yes, you're gonna have that to put song, to, right? Exactly. To, to cut your check and get this paid, you're gonna have to <laughs> put all the pride aside and be like, all right, here we go. I understand what this is for. That's when <laughs> like I call in DJ. It. That's when I uh, call in <laughs> DJ John Doe. Like, dude, I want you to play this party for me. And these are the songs you have to play. And like, like, I'm out in the crowd specialized. chilling. You know, when you play those yeah. songs, I'm like, okay, I got to go outside. You for know? sure. Because you're a specialized DJ, you can avoid all of this crap. Right. <laughs> Mobile DJs, this is your life. This is I know life it sounds awesome real. and you can make more money doing this than doing a mm. club, but... This is your life from now on. It's a it's a YMCA. good point, man. You know, it's a good point. Mobile like mobile DJs, wedding DJs, they have to realize that. It's a, and they do. You know, they know what they're getting yeah. into after a while. Oh, yeah, you know, it's sure. just like they know that's part of the game. That's part of the space. You know, you mm-hmm. are a request machine. You know. Yeah. Um, and then and you that gotta is just put the way this, it is. The thing is, though, you gotta take these requests and jiggle this thing into something palatable for everybody. Right. And that's the magic. That's when you have a good DJ or a bum you just found out of someone's basement. <laughs> is to take Cupid Shuffle, Cha Cha Slide, Blurred Lines, and all this stuff and make it cohesive into a thing so people aren't like, oh my God, I hate this guy. <laughs> and still like, ah, it's, it's not bad. It's a DJ. Like for me, I play that stuff quickly oh my God. and i move on to something else that the i think 30 that second like. version <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like boom, boom, boom. hey remember this all right we're gonna do this now but you gotta you gotta be prepared for that and figure out how to flip it into something cool like so a medley mix like <laughs> yeah like-, <laughs> like one of those medley mixes you know you're playing like fit 20 songs in like 30 seconds you know <laughs> you gotta you gotta f- finesse this thing into something else like if you're going somewhere with your playlist you got to drag them kicking and screaming over here. But you got to do it in a way so it looks like it was their idea. They're like, oh, you like this song? Well, here's something like this. 
it's kind of like this song, but it's different. It's also better. So <laughs> follow me down this path of better music. Mm-hmm. But you know, you gotta you gotta work it off like that. I don't know. Like it, you kind of I think for mobile DJs and wedding DJs, you can't be like you got your pinkies up and you're like, I am a DJ and I don't have to do this stuff. You're yeah. you are a media player, <laughs> you are an iPod. <laughs> You know, and just you have to make it be an iPod, but better. Yeah, and you, you gotta know. respect. You have to respect where you are and the people you're playing music for, because a lot of people think, oh, I, I could be at a club right now. I don't need to like, nah, man. Nah. You gotta respect it. The level and then of, you know um, professionalism there. You know. Yeah, yeah. I used to hate YMCA and this kind of stuff like that, but I just, it's ends to a means. <laughs> Like it is, it is what it is. That's when you need earplugs, you know. You're like, mm, oh, no, like <laughs> you know. I'm at the point now where I don't listen to what's on the speaker. You know the I'm lyrics. Huh? What I'm next. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about what I'm about to play next, and I'm worried about when I need to mix it in. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking like four songs ahead from right. what whatever's playing right now. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I need to get you over here so I can play this Drake song. But right now we're doing YMCA, so how can right. I get this over here? Ooh, like... Imagine that transition, <laughs> YMCA to like a Drake song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I'm got. i trying to work that out in my head. So I got I to gotta play five or six songs to get you in the mood for this oh over here. Because I think, too, you're setting the mood for people. So if your energy's off or the music you're playing is trash, your mood is garbage for the area too. And people are watching you. And if you look at her like, like they're not going to have fun, man. You got to yeah. sell it. You got to sell it, man. They're, that's the one thing that I think people don't realize enough, especially new DJs, mm-hmm. is that people are watching you. I don't eat in the DJ booth at all. <laughs> Ever, especially like if I'm yeah, in front of I a mean, dance floor. <laughs> I was gonna I say like drink. you could be one of those like nasty chewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not there. <laughs> like person who like looks nasty when they're chewing and whatnot. Like, oh that he looks nasty, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. No, listen. <laughs> or one of those, you know, th- th- <laughs> there are yeah. some things, you're right. There are some <laughs> things you just cannot do in a DJ booth, like you said. And if I do eat in a DJ booth, I'm not like in front of the decks, you know, I like take it back where no one can see me, you know? Yeah. yeah, I'm in the Um, corner somewhere. (laughs) Right. I mean, I I may have some drinks in the booth. Obviously I'm going to have some drinks, but, um, you know, eating like sloppy sandwiches with like mayonnaise on, (laughs) you know, get stuff on your chin. (laughs) Right. Exactly. You're like, "Uh, yeah, people are taking pictures of you. I would check out our DJ from last night. Like we're never, that's the other thing. You know, people are filming or taking pictures of you. Yeah. for So you had to be aware of that at all times. You are, you're like in a zoo somewhere and everybody's watching the animals inside. (laughs) That's how you need to treat you know, it. I always come fly. I make sure that I'm looking fly, like I, you know, whenever I do an event, regardless of how I dress. Mm-hmm. You know, even if I have like a t-shirt and a jacket on, or you yeah, know, yeah, like trying not to it's look sloppy like, with the t-shirt. Like, like, I'm gonna come in there. I'm a, I'm a flossy, flossy. You know, so um, yeah, yeah, with yeah, how yeah. I flossy, flossy. You know, I'm not talking about expensive. I'm talking about just mm-hmm. together. You know, yeah, so, you got um, together tonight. Like if you're doing weddings. You don't have to wear suits, but like just have like a nice dress shirt on, yeah, and nice pants and nice shoes. Don't yeah. don't go in there flip flops and be like, "What? I don't understand. It's a wedding." Like, yeah, I've seen that way. before. I have actually seen that before up here. With Somebody in was wearing flip flops and shorts. <laughs> Wait, were they flip flops or Birkenstocks? Because that's a big difference. No, no, it was, was flip flops. But there, <laughs> there, it was a it was a hot day. <laughs> Yo. And this guy was just like, I don't care. That's man. not an I'm excuse like, to DJ a wedding with flip flops on. I looked at that. You know? I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. Listen, you <laughs> will like, never, ever. He may not, like, that probably killed like four or five of his gigs for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you're going to get work based on how you interact with people. Even if, like, the say the night didn't go spectacular and some people danced, but some people didn't. Mm-hmm. How you interacted with people will make right. them be like, well, you know what? It wasn't your fault. These guys are knuckleheads. They just didn't like the music or they had an off day. Yeah. Because that happens. You do corporate stuff. Like sometimes people come from like a convention. They've been sitting at a desk all day listening to somebody talk about bar graphs. Right. And then they, they do Okay, we're going to have a they party for the loose. master. Mm-hmm. 
sometimes they don't want to let loose. Like, mm-hmm. Sometimes they're just going to huddle up in the corner and drink beer talking about whatever they saw at the, whatever at the convention was. Like, <laughs> that happens. You Yo, just got to be aware for that. <laughs> the other thing is this, right? All the like corporate uh, events I've done, I've always gotten like other gigs just from people saying, Hey, do you have a card? And then next thing you know, I'm working yeah, you yeah. know, a gig for that person. So whenever I do a corporate gig, I'm, I always get at least one, but maybe two or three gigs just from mm-hmm. working that one gig. So it's just like, Hey, you know what? So oh, I always sure. try to make sure that I'm, I'm rocking mm-hmm. out like really good music. Like I said, I'm not eating, you know, in a DJ booth or anything <laughs> like that because that looks really weird or, you know, just behind the decks, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, I, you know, I talk to everybody. Yeah. Like what, what I do is I have my cards out. I have at least five or six cards. I talk to the person who booked me. I talk to whoever they're talking to just in case. Mm-hmm. And if there's like a, a president or a vice president or something, hand the card to them. Right. And then if I ask any, is anybody doing any weddings coming up? Like, let me go talk to that person. You know, maybe they have somebody booked. Maybe they don't. Cause a lot of times people don't know where to get a wedding DJ from. They're not in that circle unless they have like a, a best friend. That's an actual club DJ. They have no idea where to get a wedding DJ. Most people just Google wedding DJs online yeah. and hope for the best. Oh, and so, then they click the first link, which is an ad. Yeah, next whatever, thing, you know, whatever you the get first like thing. DJ John Doe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most, most people have zero idea where From to Clear uh, Creek, Maryland. <laughs> one of my one of my friends, she got married and she was trying to book uh, a DJ. And she got a DJ from a, a roller skating rink because oh, he was what? playing music. And she was like, she swept him like, hey, oh, I got a wedding DJ? coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was like, oh, he's a DJ. He knows how to play music. It's all the same thing. And oh, so goodness. I was taking pictures for the wedding, so I couldn't DJ. So I was like, mm, it's not going to go how you think it is. <laughs> right. But I didn't know any of this stuff. Now, how did you know that? Like, like as to... soon as you walked in, like as soon as the DJ walk, walked in, was he dressed weird or something like that? No, no, no. So what happened was, so where the wedding ceremony was outside, and then they had the actual wedding inside this. Uh, it's on a golf course. Oh, that's and cool. And so they had the they had the actual ceremony outside on this like near this water lake thing, mm-hmm. and then they would they're gonna walk inside and go over to the the uh, the hall or whatever for the golf course. Mm-hmm. They have like some reception thing anyway. So the DJ. Uh, didn't have the audio set up for the actual ceremony correctly, and so like the speaker didn't have it set up. What can possibly and so like be wrong? I'm sitting there <laughs> taking pictures like this, and mm-hmm. I'm turning around to my cousin, like, who, who, who's this guy? Like, how would this happen? Dude, and so like I well. after the ceremony's over, I talked to my friend. I'm like, yo, where'd you get this dude from? Because I just <laughs> assumed like, oh, they must have knew somebody. That's why they didn't ask me. So I was like. And they, they knew I was taking pictures, so they were like, I he can't do both. So I was like, <laughs> well, where did this guy come from? And she was like, Oh no, we we met this guy at uh it was a roller skating rink, and you know, we thought it'd be fine. Oh, this dude was terrible. Mm-hmm. So I paint totally the picture here guy. for you. Mm-hmm. So we're at the reception now, after he bungled up the actual ceremony. So we're at the reception now. And he's got the burr, 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 DJ, whatever, whatever his oh name was. Oh my goodness, not the He horns. was dropping that. We're, it's background music because people were about to go eat. And this guy's like, dur, 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 DJ, whatever, over and over and <laughs> over. DJ John Doe here. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, <laughs> uh, he's got his cell phone out and he's taking Snapchat videos of him at the thing to be like, here. Like holding his phone me, way yeah. up here and whatnot, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> They're supposed to do like some People speech from the father. And this dude is over by the buffet taking pictures of look how the party is right now. And uh, we're like, what the e- fuck? What is eating this carrots thing? and celery and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude got food up oh on the Oh my goodness, the, come like, on. Dude, I like I for me personally, when I do weddings like that, I talk to the kitchen, I'm like, yo, set a plate aside for me. I'm gonna eat that later when everything's over. Just like <laughs> I, like, I for, right. for weddings, I go to Wendy's or McDonald's and grab a burger, and then I go to the wedding, and that'll hold yeah. me over until I can grab some food after. That's also but, a good point. You know, I always like um, 
when I DJ, I always try to eat before I DJ, but nothing heavy you because to. you never yeah, know, like, you know, you don't want any crap, you know, in your system while you're DJing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I get a bottle of water. To. That's it. And then I, I'll eat a burger or something beforehand, and just one. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll hold me over for a couple hours and I'll get some right. food after. But like, yeah, you, people don't know that. Like, you eat, if you do a wedding, eat before you do the wedding. You have to eat before the wedding. And, you know, the other thing is um, really quickly, um, you know, in certain situations, right, people mm-hmm. will give you the benefit of the doubt, right? When you're in a club situation, that's totally different because you're yeah. in a club situation. <laughs> you know, it's just like, no, this is a club. These people are make this, this is totally different than a corporate mm-hmm. event or wedding or yeah, something yeah. like that. When you're in corporate events or like weddings, people tend to give you the benefit of the doubt. Definitely in weddings, this is like the happiest oh, for day sure. for like, you know, a couple two people mm-hmm. so they're not like tripping out or like you know you know take taking you through the ringer you know they're just happy they're married corporate events hey. people are like you know what everyone's having fun we have an open bar everyone's fine you know you can't really make mistakes like that in a club setting yeah, yeah. in a lounge setting things of that nature you know what would you say as a dj right what are some like give me two or three really important things that a DJ should really take into account and make sure that they're doing as a DJ so that they won't have mm-hmm. any failures and they understand sort of the lay of the land before they go out there to do okay. their thing. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a couple. Okay. If you're a wedding DJ, you need to go to the venue before the day of the wedding. You need to go to, to talk to the people, figure out what the speakers like situation is. Do you need more speakers? Do you you don't have to carry anything? Like you need to know all that stuff. Go check out the gear. Turn mm. the gear on. <laughs> don't just take their word for it that it's fine. You need to plug everything in and play something <laughs> off of it to see what it sounds like. Like a their, sound it's check. Fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their it's fine is different from your it's fine. Yeah. So for sure, do that. I think that for for brides, you need to find out exactly like make sure you get as much information about music from her as possible if she has a couple songs that she wants to play and she's like just go to town whatever no don't leave it there keep going get as much music ask her to get music from her friends ask the music from her family get as much music as you physically can you don't have to play everything but at least have an idea who the people are because you don't know these people so you want to get a better feel about what they like, what they listen to. If there's overlap from family members, that'll give you a better indication about what they're going to listen to, and what they're going to respond to. I think that for for weddings, the f- ceremony and the first hour of your DJ set is the most important for a wedding DJ. After that, your speakers could blow up, the wall, the lights could fall down. And everything could fall apart <laughs> if that first hour is solid. Most of the people that are at the wedding are going to leave after yeah. the first hour, especially if they got kids or they're older. They're going to leave. Whoever's left is going to just want to party and have fun. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about them. That first hour, they're going to stick around and watch you or at least kind of come to the dance floor. You need to rock that first hour. For certain, you got to burn the place down the first hour and then you can coast on your laurels for the rest of the two, three hours left. But, you know, you still want to do a good job on that. But the first hour is more important than how you finish. You can say have the greatest party on earth at the end of the night and there's 150 people dancing. But the people (laughs) who matter already left and their interpretation of what you were was in that first hour or the ceremony. Especially do not mess up the ceremony. That ceremony has to go off without a hitch. And then that first hour when you open the dance floor it has to go off solid. I say that's the for weddings. For corporate stuff, uh, you definitely need to see the venue first. The same thing is a lot of stuff overlaps. I think that you you need to find out what the the owner, the CEO cares about in particular, because they could have the owner or the CEO could be like, Well, I want to hear polka music. You have to play <laughs> polka music. Oh That's your goodness. set from the whole night. I'm out of here. 
DJ yeah, John like, Doe, <laughs> I have a gig for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you you know, you can figure out what the owner what they're what they're into. And I think that for a DJ, they don't do enough talking. You need to talk to as but many people as But you know what? But let me stop you there. I'm not yo Keo, I'm not a I'm not a talk on a microphone at all. Well, not I mean not in the microphone. I mean before the gig system. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, yeah. I, oh, I definitely, to, yes. Setting it up for if, sure. If it's a like a venue, or whatever, I talk to the servers. I talk to the bartenders. Yeah, I'll talk to whoever is running the manager on the floor because these people will get you out of jams. Yeah, if somebody's true. being disruptive, there's equipment failure or something like that, or you need a power cable or something. These people will help you out. Talk to your bar managers. Talk to their servers. Talk to everybody. They want hook you up with food, get you free drinks. These people will make it happen. So I'll tip them or I'll, I'll at least talk to them. And I definitely talk to, you know, whoever organized it, whoever. So that that's the thing. On the microphone, I, I generally don't talk all night. I don't yeah, like I talking on the microphone. Yeah, I think it's I'm disruptive. I'm not on a microphone, dude. I, I find like it you disruptive. you said, bring someone else in there to, you know, if you're not yeah, a great, yeah. t- it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm not a great talker. I just don't like talking on microphones when I'm DJing. I, so I bring someone else in to do that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. I find it annoying. So, yeah, I don't. I don't talk to them a lot. I'll play music, and if I got to make an announcement, I'll do that. But once I get for corporate, once I get started, this is the party here. It's going to be jam after jam, and I'm going to be <laughs> feeling the crowd out and figure out what you guys want me to play. And I'll take requests, but I don't announce. Do never announce requests. Just tell the the person you booked it that I'm going to take requests. And and so if somebody comes up, you know, you can talk to them. If it's a good request, play it immediately. If it's a bad request, you know, you can put that down for the while. But, you know, I don't announce requests because then you're going to get the rush of Nancy and accounting is going to be like, what I like, you know, Aqua. Everybody likes Aqua. Like, no. <laughs> so you're going to get that. So kind of <laughs> avoid Nancy and accounting. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, just avoid that. <laughs> So what about you? What do you, what kind of tips and stuff do you have for? I would for say DJs? this. Um, first and foremost, get paid up front. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a, yes, yes. First and foremost, even if you are a DJ starting out, right? Mm-hmm. Believe me, if you start off by saying, I want to get paid up front the very first time, that will set you on your path for a very long time, you know, because yeah. people will try to test you. People will try to take advantage of you. Make sure Absolutely. you get paid upfront, regardless if it's like you giving you know, someone giving you the opportunity to play in a really big club in front of a lot of people. And they're like, you know, well, it's one thing to say, Hey, you know what you can, I'll give you an hour set here, but I'm not going to mm-hmm. uh, pay you, but it's at this really huge club. I may do that. Right. But if someone mm-hmm. says, hey, I want you to do this for me and it's a paid gig, get paid up front. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think the other thing is, you know, even if you are just a solo DJ, you know, try to figure out what what your genre is. You may not even know that at that point. You may know that. I mean, I started out as mm-hmm. a hip hop DJ. And then I became yeah. a club DJ. Then I became a house DJ. Then I became a, a deep house DJ. And now mm-hmm. I sort of consider myself, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I call it an underground open format DJ. So I play a lot of different genres, mm-hmm. but they're just like underground sort of types of music, you know, that you haven't heard before. So yeah, yeah. that's what I think, you know. So I think be true to your genre or genres, you know. And... Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're going to do, if you're going to like try to strike out on your own to do your own event, start off at an extremely small capacity event. If it's a hundred, that is the perfect size because now what you've done is if you can Mm -hmm. get 50 people out, now it feels ultra exclusive because it's small, right? Yeah, yeah. So really try, don't, don't go for the like 500, 600, whatever, yeah, even if you got boys, right. I mean, you know, even today that can possibly happen because, you know, again, everything is done, you know, just online and yeah, the digital yeah, yeah. domain, but I Back would still day, start off you know. in a very small venue, you know, and mm-hmm. don't, you know, just invite a few people 
where you know you'll get like at least 50 people in a hundred capacity place because again, mm-hmm. then it feels exclusive. So I think those sort of three things for me, um, I wish I had known those things. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I mean the, the genre things yeah. I picked up over time, you know, as a DJ, mm-hmm. but the other two getting paid up front and then like, you know, striking out on your own, but doing it in a very small venue, um, you know, that can hold like a much smaller capacity. I wish I had known those two things up front. I think mm-hmm. if I had known those, I would probably um, be in a totally different place um, today. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, those those are some things right there. Well, folks, there you have it. Um, another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. <laughs> <laughs> I'm DJ Keo. Thanks for All watching right. and listening. <laughs> yes, thanks for watching and listening. Uh, oh, and one other thing. I wanted to just do some spring cleaning. So the Behind the Groove podcast will be airing on Fridays now, opposed to Wednesdays. I like the Friday... Um, I like the Friday sort of podcast. It's kind of cool. It's the end of the week. It gives people time to like, you know, listen to a whole bunch of stuff, you know, just veg out on stuff. And then on Saturday, the full video episode will also air. So Friday for the audio, Saturday for the video.